Pixelmator Pro has been one of the most high profile Mac apps for many years now. Thanks in part to winning Apple's Mac App of the Year award in 2018, and thanks in part to its very Mac centric design and solid feature sets. I bought the original Pixelmator all the way back in 2011 for 30 bucks and Pixelmator Pro for 50 bucks in 2017 and I've got incredible value for money from those purchases in the subsequent years. Over the years, however, Pixelmator Pro has pushed further and further into graphic design territory and the photo editing tools have become a bit lost within the expanding vector text and page editing tools. Thankfully, the Pixelmator team addressed this in 2019 by releasing a separate app focused totally on photo editing, originally called Pixelmator Photo and later renamed Photomator. Photomator won Apple's Mac App of the Year award in 2023 and so, as a long-term Mac user and a backer of Pixelmator apps from the very beginning, I thought it was about time that I officially put it through its paces. <music> Photomator is a non-destructive photo editor with a full raw demosaicing engine. It lacks features such as background removal that you can find in Pixelmator Pro because it is squarely focused on photo editing, not compositing or page layout. It currently supports RAW files for more than 650 cameras, everything from Canon 10Ds all the way through to Nikon Z9s. Notably, the app also supports both compressed and uncompressed Fuji RAW files something some far more expensive editors do not. As a Fuji camera user myself, this is a welcome feature. Since this comes up regularly on my reviews of RAW editors, I should also point out that it will also edit Samsung RAW and Apple Pro RAW photos too, in HDR mode too, if your laptop or monitor supports it. So let's kick things off by talking about the browser interface. The Photomator interface is comprised of two uh, sections, the first of which is this photo browser and the second of which is the editing suite, which we'll get to in a minute. Up until the current version of Photomator, the only images that you would see in here would be those that you'd already added to your Apple Photos catalog. However, in this latest version, the Photomator team have added a regular file browser which enables you to add files manually outside of that Apple Photos catalog ecosystem. To do so, you simply come up to the top here, click on this little drop down, select files, click the import button and add the photos that you want to edit. There are advantages and disadvantages to using this files catalog or the photos catalog, but it does at least bring Photomator in line with something like Luminar Neo now. The interface is a thing of beauty. It's very easy to resize these thumbnails. And if you want, you can even click on this button and have it in a lovely, beautiful, orderly square tiled format too. Once you've decided on the photo that you want to edit, you can right click and select Open Edit Tools. And we'll get to all that in a second. Further functionality can be found by right clicking on any image. For instance, you can find the workflow functionality that was introduced on the previous version of Photometer and add to your favorites, duplicate or output using the standard sharing tools. Further to that, you've also got this edit with Pixelmator Pro if you have Photometer's other app installed, which enables you to use the more advanced tools in that app to finesse your photograph. Yep, it's a nicely designed app. The interface sticks rigidly to Apple's design language and is all the better for it. Buttons and dialog boxes work in a beautifully understated and intuitive fashion. The most important part of Photomania, however, is of course its editing suite. Let's put it through its paces by doing some edits to a RAW file. Once you've chosen to edit a photo, there are two ways to get into the editing suite. You can either right click, Select open edit tools, or much more simply, you can just hit 
the space bar. That then brings it into this screen with a nice little film strip across the bottom of the screen, which you can, if you want, hide from view. In order to get to the editing tools, you have to click on this little button here. I feel this is quite a peculiar design choice. If I've gone into the edit suite, I'd far prefer these to appear automatically. The editing tools are broken down into the familiar format that we've all seen in all raw editors in the past. We've got the basic stuff here, the highlights, brightness, contrast, clarity, etc. Selective coloring tools and things like levels. In use, these sliders are beautiful and fluid and you get this lovely smooth increase as you bring the slider off to the right or to the left. If I have any criticism of these sliders, it's they don't quite go far enough. All of these sliders work pretty much as you'd expect. The highlights for me are things like the selective clarity, which I think is excellent. I don't tend to touch the texture and clarity tools at all uh, in the main basic raw editing tools, because what you find is that the bulk of the pixel information in the image is in the mid-tones, and that's really only what you want to affect in terms of texture and clarity. So being able to isolate clarity and texture to those mid-tones is a huge bonus. I also really like the little selective color option here. So you click a broad color, let's say we want to increase the saturation in the sky a bit, and click on the blues here. You can see on this histogram, that quite a portion of the image is in that blue part of the color spectrum, and we can then crank up the saturation just on that. The color balance tool is also quite neat. Let's say we wanted to warm up the highlight slightly, we can come here and just drag that over into the yellow section to just add some warmth to the highlights. And if we wanted to say cool off the shadows, then we can bring that down to the right here. We can also increase the saturation with these little sliders and the luminous levels with these ones. It's a really flexible tool. I found that using these sliders, it's possible to create very tasteful and subtle edits. The nature of this application is such that it encourages you to not go crazy. In that sense, it's kind of the polar opposite of Luminol Neo, where they throw everything including the kitchen sink into it and encourage you to have all sorts of wacky and strange effects in many ways this is much more of a purist's raw photo editor so it's a beautifully designed app and it has a great raw editing tool set that can tastefully bring out the best in your smartphone or camera raw photos let's talk now about the bells and whistles that extra functionality that photographers look for in editing apps in 2024 the pixelmator team have been steadily rolling out new features in Photomator over the last four years, the most notable of which are the new file browser I mentioned earlier, full HDR support, smart deep banding, batch workflows, AI masking, denoising, LUTs, and AI resizing. And let's kick things off by talking about the machine learning in Photomator, which I have to admit I have found extremely hit and miss. Sometimes it works really well, does a nice subtle and sensitive uh, set of adjustments to an image, and sometimes, it, I don't know, it's just very peculiar. By way of testing, here's one of my photos of London, and there's the main ML button. Now, the difference between this and these, of course, is that this will use all of these various machine learning-enabled adjustments, not just one of them. So let's hit the button and it's done a nice job in this case. Brought up the shadows very slightly, highlights too. It's increased the warmth. Now, this is actually the most sensible change of all because this is a very cold image, very blue. I mean, shot in midwinter, but it hasn't hurt at all to add a little bit of warmth to the photo. Giving it 11% to the colour temperature, which is something I would 100% have done myself. We've also got a little bit of a tweak to the contrast. It's though at the black point slightly, which itself increases contrast. It's got no tweaks to texture and clarity. It's cranked the vibrance up. Good on you, Photomator, because saturation, of course, affects 
your low volt or saturation levels. It affects all pixels in the image, no matter what the saturation value is, whereas vibrance just affects those pixels which are least saturated so it's a much more sensitive subtle way of making the image look a bit more colorful what else have we got here it's made some changes to the blue it's added some brightness it's brightened up the sky absolutely fair enough and it's dropped the hue very very slightly it's also cooled off the highlights tweaked the midtones and the shadows made them slightly warm on the whole i'm pretty impressed by that uh, if I wanted a nice, quick, subtle tweak to this image, uh, I really can't fault it. Show you what it's done. Let's use the old before and after styler here. So there is the before. As you can see, it's a lot colder. It's kind of washed out the image. And then after, it's brightened up the highlights nicely, brought out the shadow. It's an all-round better image. Now, that's pretty good. Let's see how it goes on a different kind of image. Okay, so here's a shot I took in Cambridge on my trip to the UK. It's, of course, midwinter over there at the moment. Hence the trees without the leaves on them. You probably used to seeing pictures of the River Cam with lovely summery scenes rather than people rugged up in coats and woolly hats. But there you go. So what can we say about this image? A little bit washed out. I'd like to see a little bit of colour brought into the greens and Maybe the sky warmed up slightly. Let's give it the old global machine learning and see what we get. And that's pretty disappointing. So let's see a before and after. Here's before, here's after. I suppose actually now it's increased sky brightness slightly, maybe a little bit bluer, but there's not a lot going on there. It's quite a dingy photo, isn't it? I've been trying to increase the exposure quite substantially we're up to what 100 percent there and highlights that's fine i bring the sh no not shadows let's bring up the black point get a bit of contrast going in there not super impressed with that at all so as you can see the old machine learning isn't a winner every single time yeah the machine learning of photomator is Definitely a bit of a work in progress. My main issue with features such as machine learning buttons is that they can make beginner photographers think that the resulting settings are the best choice for an image. When, as I just demonstrated, that's often far from the truth. In Photomator's defense, most raw editors do a substandard job with AI-based adjustments. In fact, the only app that I can think of that gets it consistently right is Adobe Lightroom and its auto button. I did, of course, also put the rest of Photomator's features to the test, and here are my findings. The clone tool isn't great and cannot be relied upon for medium to large fixes. It seems to work in the same way as the old pre-generative Photoshop clone tool and is only good for small stuff like dust spots. The repair tool works in the same way and is about as useful. The super resolution tool is excellent. It upscaled all of my test images from web size 2000 pixel to print size 6000 pixels with some of the cleanest AI resolution increases I've seen. Both Smart Denoise and Smart D Band are also excellent. The deep banding tool can enhance photographs to give beautiful fall off on transitional color regions and add a degree of subtlety to shots with a high dynamic range and full look in the histograms. The denoise tool is amongst the best I've used, up there in fact with Adobe Lightroom and Topaz Labs. It does a really great job on denoising complex scenes with varying levels of noise across the entire luminance range. The presets work about as well as presets work in any application. And if you primarily upload to Instagram, then they may prove useful. The layer system and automated sky background and subject masking tools work as well as those found in Lightroom Classic and can be finessed with nearly the same level of complexity too. Using layers, you can isolate edits in a beautifully granular way, enabling you to return to an edit and tweak as required thanks to the accompanying sidecar files. This particular feature has improved greatly 
since I last tested Photomator shortly after its release. The workflow tool is better designed than something like the automations in Photoshop. It's been constructed to work visually, enabling you to produce powerful batch processing rules for your photographs. The crop tool and its highly configurable grid overlay is excellent, but the machine learning crop isn't great and usually comes up with wacky and, frankly, useless cropping suggestions. HDR editing is incredibly useful if you shoot a lot of photos with a recent iPhone or other smartphone. Being able to edit in HDR and have both SDR and HDR edits is awesome. I must admit I've been blown away by how far Photomate has come since its initial release for Mac a year ago. On the surface, it looks like a simple little editor, a basic photo processor for the kind of Mac user that might run a mile from the complexity of something like Lightroom. But the truth is that Photomotor is crammed full of powerful, useful, and effective tools. And as I delve deeper and deeper into its feature set, I kept discovering one valuable tool after another. Above all, Photomayer is a true Apple product, deeply embedded within the Mac OS system and perfectly suited to act as the interface between your photo library and the outside world. It can edit pretty much any raw file format you throw at it. It has superlative AI upscaling and noise removal tools. It's a powerful, non-destructive raw editor. It has brilliant batch processing tools. It has a clean and beautifully designed interface. Yeah, the machine learning tools were a bit hit and miss and I did encounter crashes when clicking the info button on certain kinds of images, but in all other regards, it's a top tier application. If you've tried Luminar and found its editing tools to be about as subtle as a punch in the face, I strongly suggest you take Photomator for a spin because you'll be seduced, not assaulted. It's the kind of app that could quickly win over a photo purist, someone who wants to bring out the best in their photographs, not transform them into barely recognizable simulations. It's also worth pointing out that purchasing the Mac version also gets you the equally excellent iPhone, iPad and Vision Pro, if you've got one, version 2. It can be bought outright with a lifetime license for 200 Australian dollars over here or on a subscription for 8 Australian dollars a month as you prefer. Photomaker will definitely be staying on my Mac. I look forward to seeing just how far the Pixelmator team can push this little powerhouse photo processing app. And that will do us for this video guys would you consider ditching something like adobe lightroom for a mac only app like photomator do uh, let me know in the comments section below if you got value from this video please give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel for more photo video and drone related content from me till the next time guys ta-ta